Today we're gonna build a submarine that can actually get to the bottom of this sunken uranium mine at 243 meters deep. You want me to swim into the tunnel? Uh, I think this will last hope because it's literally stuck on this side. Oh sh**. Oh, we might have broken the fiber optic that right now. Last year we already built a submarine that was supposed to reach this bottom. Unfortunately, spoiler, it imploded at 129 meters underwater. So this time we are upgrading it from this to this. This is very heavy. <laughs> What broke in the last year's design was more specifically this 3D printed part. Its purpose was to seal a tube with a camera inside. Let's look at a cross section. It's actually two parts glued together with epoxy resin. An o-ring seal sits in here and therefore when the outside water pressure rises, water is stopped in both of these contact spots. Well, we must remember that at the bottom of this mineshaft, the pressure is very large. In the part that broke, the o-ring was pushed up by the pressure so hard that it broke the top part off. Now, we still really like this design and to be fair, this happened because I didn't put enough epoxy inside, but still, there's a simpler solution. No, it's not filling the tube with oil, that's for the future. It's your second suggestion, aluminum end caps. Here, you place an o-ring, connect with this acrylic plate, then place more seals and insert into a tube. Where there need to be cables, you drill a hole and use this penetrator that clamps and seals it. Easy enough. Purely theoretically, these should last to about 500 meters underwater, so I hope so. <laughs> That's not the only upgrade we need though. It's more of an aspiration than anything, but we want to build the best underwater drone we are capable of, at least for the time being. That's why we need power. These are the previous motors we used, and these are the new ones. Actually, these as well. Four of each side. It will perhaps be more useful in some other missions, but the drone will be theoretically able to carry a human standing on it above water. <laughs> By the way, we got a lot of these components as a grant from a university, so now we need to make use of them somehow. For example, this singular blue robotics raster is $700. We cannot afford it, yet we got it. Let's test if it was a good pick. <laughs> I can barely hold it. Yes, yes it was. Here's how I began designing this new drone. Starting with this blob, I carved out these four tunnels for the main motors. They are at a 37 degree angle. Then four tunnels for vertical motors. That allows it to move and rotate in every axis. In other words, six degrees of freedom. I'm actually sort of replicating what we already learned during this project. Then Peter did 90% of all other design work and we got this. 55 kilograms. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, it's time to build this. We placed two waterproof cameras at the front, 60 millimeters apart, to simulate human eyes and do stereo vision and goggles. But we didn't have enough time to set it up for this mission, so we'll use only one of them for now. The rear of the drone is similar, but there's connectors instead of cameras. We decided to print the rest of the shell in nylon, so we ordered that online. I'm so excited. I need, uh, Yo. It's made by JLC3DP, who sponsored these prints and this video, so let's get it assembled. Whoa, this is awesome though. The print quality, I mean. The unique feature of these prints is that they are printed in SLS technology, not the regular FDM printers. That means that you can't see normal layer lines and they are extremely tough. 
JLC 3DP service is really simple because you just upload your STL file to their website and get an instant quote. SLS prints are usually hard to get because for that you need a really expensive printer. That's why JLC is just the simplest way to get it inexpensively. You can also select many other materials, for example even stainless steel. Now we just need to put all of these parts together. One more thing, JLC offers very fast delivery. Use our link in the description to get up to $60 of free orders. So now the last major part, the electronics, which will fit into two of these pipes. The biggest upgrade is the battery pack. It's formed of not one, but three of these. Well, the motors need a lot of power. All other parts are pretty standard, but I really like the overall layout. Now we need to connect all the penetrators and connect the electronics to the penetrators. Well, that was three days in itself and we burned two pixels because of a stupid mistake. The pipes come down to a polycarbonate plate. We need to add some buoyancy foam. Unfortunately, it's yellow, so we'll need to fix it someday. You're racist. And it's ready. <laughs> Let's test the drone in water. Watch out now, alright? Uh -huh. <laughs> we decided to test the maximum power. It's, it's stronger than you. <laughs> try, try again, try again. Try again. After we confirmed that it indeed swims violently, we had about 15 hours until the scheduled mission in the mine. So, we gotta go. We just need to do a quick trip across the country. Yo. We've arrived at the uranium mine. place. Okay. We've been here once before, 415 days prior. The mineshaft is 243 meters deep. Putting that into perspective, if the ground and water disappeared underneath us, up to the bottom of the mineshaft, standing on the top in this place would compare to this grain. The first goal is to beat our previous depth. The second goal is to reach the bottom, and also a bonus goal, don't lose the submarine. That would be a nightmare. Anyway, we can start the mission. Alright, let's do it then. You might be wondering, how did we record this shot? Well, we did that with CPS-5. It's the same design we're trying to beat today, although we didn't upgrade this green one. If you're interested in building it yourself, then listen closely. After our last year's adventure, Jack, who had built the CPS-5 himself, also took it underground on an expedition to explore a flooded cave. It's in Cantabrian Mountains in Spain. This drone has allowed him and his entire team to reach the depth of 88 meters in the cave, this is the actual footage from the expedition. Although going 88 meters underwater wasn't deep enough to reach the bottom of the cave system, this year he plans to improve his CPS-5 to be able to explore it further. If you would like to do things like that as well, over the past couple of years we've built an extensive DIY course, which now teaches almost a thousand students how to build this very drone from scratch. Actually, a lot of beginners who have never done anything like this before are building these drones by themselves and then using them for their own missions. So, after watching this video, go to cpsdrone.com and sign up for a free training. In it, we show how to get started with building the CPS-5 underwater drone yourself. The link is in the description. Now let's proceed down the mineshaft. And yeah, now it's, we're at 10 meters. Do I go further? Yes, yes, yes. I can still see you. So 
Okay, 14 meters. Do I go further? Wait, 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 wait. No, don't go deeper. Around the 14 meter mark, the spool with the fiber optic tether tangled up. So after a quick analysis, I opted to disassemble the frame of the spool and untangle it that way. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Crisis averted, we can continue. Okay, I'm swimming down. Finally. I guess it doesn't seem very clear. Well, we're going fast. 30 meters and there's gonna be a level, from what I recall. Yep. Yeah, here we go. Do you see the entrance to the horizontal shaft? Each 40 meters there will be a horizontal corridor, which we decided to swim past, since inside we could tangle up very easily and never come back. Okay, right now I'm going deeper as we discussed. Oh, I see a freaking very sharp spike. I hope this won't cause any problems. I'm at 39 meters. Whoa. It's already pretty deep. 54. We'll see the second entrance in a second now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. The image is very clear. Yeah, the image is perfect. Also, I can see way further because of the stronger lights, right? Yeah, okay. I have the second entrance at roughly 70 meters, I think. 69 meters. And go in. The force on the drone. It's roughly a Toyota Yaris, and in a second it will become a Toyota Corolla. And a couple of more meters down and it's a Cybertruck. Never mind. Yeah, almost 100, 95, 99 meters. Another entrance. Another entrance, okay. Oh yeah, and now there is this obstruction that I remember. At the depth of 106 oh, well, now, meters. Oh, now we can see exactly what it is. Yeah, but it's it's no biggie. Yes. I think I think we're going faster, maybe. Yeah, I'm pretty pretty sure we're going pretty fast. Oh, okay. So now we're approaching the crash zone. <laughs> we're almost approaching 129 now. Yeah. That's 129, and that's, that's 130. Our okay, that's, we broke our record. That's our record done. All right, going deeper still. Just, I'm really cold. Wim Hof method. We are near a place where Wim Hof lives, actually. Yeah. Oh, that's an obstruction. This is, this is the biggest obstacle that we've seen, I think. Oh, crap. And I'm just pushing through it. Okay. Slowly. Yeah, I, I know, it's not that bad. R look. Okay. So oh, there's a... Beam. Beam. Horizontal beam. Crap. You, you need to go horizontally, like 90 degrees to, to the left. Yeah, like we, we need to... Oh no. It's okay. Oh, is it okay? I'm stuck. You're stuck. Oh no. Okay. There's a line or something. Yeah, I'm stuck on the line, I think. A little bit. Alright. Shit. Oh, okay. We lost the video. We lost the video. Okay, video is back. Why though? I don't know. Water damage, I guess. I'm pulling, I'm pulling. Slowly. Okay, 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 great, great. You pulled me. Should we go deeper or abort? Yeah. I think we should go deeper. All right. Because <laughs> the video slightly suffers, I don't know why. Okay, so we try again. All right, going close to this. Yes? Yes. There's a high probability that we won't make it back. Okay. Okay. I'm below the beam. Why, why is it so shaky? What? Why is it so, so shaky? I'm not sure. All right. We're at 160 almost. Approaching. Oh, oh my man, oh shit. The compression is now like horrible. I'm lifting so much crap with these, with my propellers. There's a lot of dust in here. Oh, oh, oh. The compass is working. Yes. 
Okay, I don't think I will get that video back. Do we scrub it? Yeah? Yeah, pulling it out. Okay. But that's not the end. Okay, pull it out. 160. While pulling the drone out by the tether, I got stuck at 110 meters. This time it was really stuck. What's the depth? 109. I can actually feel it hit something. Peter tried rebooting the drone and surprisingly... Soft restart, yeah. That turned the camera back on. Oh, I got the camera. <laughs> Whoa. Now it was possible to turn around with the drone and inspect the place at which the tether was tangled. All right, I will look up. After swimming up and down for a while, we realized that since we're recording the computer screen, we can hold the drone and go back on the recording to analyze what exactly happened. What we concluded is that the fiber optic tether winded around this white line anti-clockwise. Then, as I was pulling on it, the contact point traveled up until it reached this metal-looking weird thing, which is attached to the white line. At this point our hopes for retrieving the drone were low, but we had to try. The first step was to unwind the tether. The problem is, there isn't enough space to go around in here, especially with that big of a drone. We had to go down until it was possible to do it there. And yeah, I forgot to turn on the screen recording again. We're swimming back down just to get unstuck. Yeah. Tak, tak. Właśnie przepłynąłeś dobrze. Okay. I teraz wracam. No to masz ciągnąć kabel. Wyciągać kabel? Tak. Okay, the tether and the line are separated now. However, tether is still wedged under this metal thing. It's not fixed, meaning that it can still slide through, but when Peter tried to swim up, this happened. Oh, oh. oh shit. Oh no. Okay. Communication is lost. Oh, we might have broken the fiber optic that right now. Or the battery might have discharged completely. Ooh. Yeah. Hello! <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 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 Okay, <laughs> don't celebrate, please. <laughs> then the realization came. There's na prawo. Okay, in the tunnel. You want me to swim into the tunnel? I think that's the last hope, because it's literally stuck on this side. If we apply force from the side, the tether could come out. And it just so happens that it's wedged in front of this tunnel. Yeah, oh, yeah. tunnel, no dobra. Right there. Tu. Mm -hmm. Tak, tu. Sure, że tu? Yes. Płyn, płyn, płyn do przodu. Ok? Chyba, chyba się uwolniło coś. I, I think, I think... You're in the tunnel, right? Yes. Yes, yes I can feel you, I can feel you, I think. Stop. Yes, it's done! <laughs> ok, ok, <laughs> yeah. Let's go back. Now we could finally pull the drone out all the way from 100 meters without any major obstacles. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is why you, you couldn't steer it properly. What? It's it tangled on the motor. See? Here. Oh whoa. Before we show you the damage done to the submarine, subscribe to our channel because in the next video we'll visit this mineshaft for the final time and we guarantee that we'll get to the bottom, even if that means losing the submarine. On the submarine, the fiber optic tether got completely sucked into one of our horizontal motors, but the communication still worked to the very end. The two vertical propellers were completely jumped by a fishing wire or something of that sort, which we must have caught somewhere at the 110 meter mark. We also concluded that the electronics enclosure didn't leak. And the last thing, don't forget to check out the free training on how to build a CPS-5 submarine yourself. Thanks. Just a second. I need to do something.